Air pollution is a very serious topic to me. I suffer from allergies, but they never really affected me to an extreme until I moved to Washington. I've been hospitalized due to my allergies, and before I moved to Washington, I lived in Tulsa, Oklahoma, a very different climate compared to Washington State. According to State of Air, the average particle pollution within 24 hours in Oklahoma is 0.0, .0 which is grade A, whereas in Washington State it is a 6.8, a grade F. By these statistics, you can see a clear difference in how much allergies alone would alter, not to mention sensitivity increase. To many U.S. residents, in particular Washington State residents, consider Washington to be the state that is always on fire, as well as California. Forest fires are a major problem in Washington, and it affects many tourists and residents who come to Washington to enjoy the outdoors. It may also result in health problems in the respiratory system. Medical masks used to cover the nose and mouth are continuously sold out by outdoor sports players, mountaineers, and many other people who participate in outdoor activities in the rush to protect their body from air quality that equals smoking seven cigarettes a day. There are many factors that are involved in the production of air pollution, but Washington State's main contenders are motor vehicles, outdoor burning, and wood smoke. Wildfires fall under this category as well, a major problem in Washington State. The fog that is seen during the summer and fall months is due to excess amount of ozone. This ozone is created because of the reaction between volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, and nitrous oxides. This happens in the presence of heat and light, hence why this smog mostly occurs during the summer and fall months. Other examples of air pollution is buildup of airborne particles smaller than 2.5 micrometers, which causes haze. These particles come from car exhaust, power plants, wildfires, and wood stoves, all of which are common things in the state of Washington. We already know the effects of air pollution on its stakeholders but there are many solutions that can be taken to prevent further deterioration on clean air. The use of renewable fuel and clean energy production is a key factor in preventing air pollution. Some examples of renewable fuel and energy production would be solar energy, geothermal energy, and the use of wind turbines. Another way of prevention would be greener transportation. Limiting the amount of exhaust from cars would decrease the levels of CO2 in the atmosphere. It is recommended to many families to limit the use of electricity or transferring over to a cleaner energy in order to produce less pollution. Green buildings is a newer idea where buildings being created are resource efficient and environmentally responsible structures that will help reduce their carbon footprint. People are taking actions to protect themselves and others from the hazardous air quality. Many schools, for example, have come up with plans on what to do when air quality reaches dangerous levels. It progresses from giving students with respiratory diseases and heart diseases the decision to stay inside or not, up to not allowing anyone outside and with little physical activity as to prevent any sort of asthma attack from the students. Not only does this help prevent any further contamination from the air, but it also opens up the opportunity for students to ask questions about climate change and what other ways it is affecting us. Although there are lots of communities and organizations doing everything in their power to prevent air pollution, many people do not see the tragic effects that are coming our way in the next hundred years. One of the biggest effects would be the impact on the human respiratory system. The number of respiratory infections or diseases may increase due to inaction of pollution cleanup. According to a report published by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, states, air pollution is the world's biggest cause of premature deaths, which will affect our population drastically if nothing is done to stop it. These toxins that people are breathing in, if taken in heavy doses, can result in lung cancer and other forms of cancer related to the respiratory system. It may seem like only big actions can be made to prevent and end air pollution, but in reality, there are lots of small nudges that can get the Earth's population moving in the right direction. Small steps, such as carpooling or even looking for products that are certified to limit indoor air pollution, can help increase the planet's atmosphere as a whole. If everyone took the time out of their day to make sure the decision they are making helps prevent air pollution, 
the Earth may not reach its designated tipping point as fast as the predictions say. Many different aspects of life are affected by air pollution, and some are affected in ways many people may not know about. The effect air pollution has on grapevines vastly impacts wine production and its sales. The air pollutants that mostly affect viticulture are airborne fluorides, ozone, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxides, heavy metals including lead and cadmium, and combinations of more than one pollutant. According to the effects of air pollution on grapevines by L. H. Weinstein, in 1954, Ozone effects on grapevines were first reported when symptoms such as small black and brown lesions were found on the leaves on the grapevines themselves. They were able to tell what the cause of this fungal infection was based on its speckled appearance. Most common grapevines are high sensitivity to airborne fluoride. This increased fluoride content in the grapes and stalks, which affect time at which grapes are producing. Not only is air pollution bringing down production time of grapevines, it lowers the quality of them as well. The quality of grapes is not only affected by air pollution, but also climate change. Most wine growers are seeing changes in their grapes since temperatures are rising and the swings in weather patterns are becoming more severe. These wine growers being affected are having to take action. They are moving to cooler zones, planting varieties that do better in the heat, and shading their grapes with more leaf canopy. The areas that used to be the ideal locations for certain grapes are not useful anymore. Harvest is earlier and the quality of wine decreases because the grapes have to ripen faster. To produce good wine, there are factors that come into play. The sun, rainfall, light, and humidity. Grapevines can tolerate heat and drought and dry farming is practiced in other places around the world, but these past five years have been the planet's hottest years on record. This trend is not supposed to stop either. More warming is expected. Average temperatures at major wine producers' vineyards have rose 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit over the past 40 years. Their harvest is 10 days earlier than it was 20 years ago, according to the company's president, Miguel A. Torres. Producers are having to look at the long term. The grapes may ripen earlier and earlier as global temperatures increase. They are having to look at quality, drought-resistant vines. Those vines produce more flavor, acidity, and intensity, but have lower water needs. The warming trend is pushing some hotter wine regions out of the favorable temperature zone, so places like Oregon are more suitable for growing. The minor weather variations that occur from vintage to vintage can change the grape's sugar, acid, and tannin content, affecting the wine's taste and characteristics. Climate change is a very serious worldwide problem for winemakers, but the winemakers are not only changing their practices, but also trying to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. Since climate change is a global problem, it is affecting wineries worldwide. For example, severe drought in South Africa's Western Cape caused a 15% drop in the grape harvest officials announced in May, saying wine prices will likely go up as a consequence. A predicted long-term drying trend has serious implications for South Africa's wine industry, said Wanda Augustin of Vinpro, which represents the nation's wine producers and stakeholders. Also, in Europe, vineyards are being planted as far north as Sweden. Winemakers are setting up in France's northwesternmost region. It previously was undesirable because of Atlantic wind, rain, and lack of sunshine. In Italy, a farmer named Livio Salvador had been growing and harvesting the same grapes on the same land season after season, but five years ago he started to wonder whether something was changing. When he walked through his vineyards, he would see batches of grass that were browned and desiccated. The damage tended to appear on the outside of the bunch, the part that was most exposed to sunlight. Salvador talked to other growers and winemakers in the region, and they were noticing it too. Their grapes were getting sunburned, and it started becoming normal. One chart showed the, the number of days when maximum temperatures topped 95 degrees Fahrenheit. In 2018, it had happened 13 times. Throughout the 1990s, such days rarely occurred more than once or twice. Another chart showed prolonged heat waves. The region had been seeing high temperature stretches that were unheard of in the 1970s and 80s. Since 1990, the median annual temperature in Treviso had risen 1.5 degrees Celsius. Climate change is only beginning to reorder the global wine industry, altering the patterns of how and where grapes are produced and testing whether the world's iconic regions can find ways to adapt to these changes. The rise of global temperatures also is going to result in different growing techniques or the choice of the rind varietal. The hotter summers are shortening the growing season. The grapes are 
quickly developing sugar, which ferments into alcohol, but they aren't building the same acidity. Growers claim that they have little choice but try to try to manage, some experimenting with new watering systems, technological adaptations, and shade strategies. Some vintners are reluctant to talk about the climate change because the commercial identity and value of their wines are based on their location. But these famous regions are in trouble because if they don't make changes or don't make them fast enough, then there will be a change of where the great wines are made. But on the other hand, some vintners are realizing that these changes are undeniable. Some are even saying that the treasured aromas and flavor of their wine have already changed. Some wineries are following sustainable, organic, or biodynamic styles of viticulture. They are trying to show their care for their vineyards and for the environment. Mimi Castile lives in Willamette Valley and owns her own winery, but Castile also studied forestry and firefighting. Her experience in forestry and firefighting convinced her that mankind's encroachment on nature was destroying natural habitats crucial to agricultural productivity. Although it may take decades or even a century or more to show, we are now feeling the effects in declining productivity and nutrient quality. Healthy soil can capture more carbon than trees, she argues, making a case for carbon farming. Soil is the one true thing we have to fight for climate change, Castile said, adding, it's not that hard and it doesn't have to be at odds with the economics of the business, but people have a one-generation view of sustainability. Castile claims that we think we can grow one thing at the expense of all others and call it sustainable, but it's really not. For example, emphasis on monoculture prompts growers to clear stream beds to expand vineyards, but this disrupts habitat by dislodging pests that then attack the vines, requiring more chemical treatments that eventually wash into the stream with erosion. People are practicing different techniques to make their vineyards more sustainable, but Castile claims that their techniques are wrong and is challenging viticulture dogma. Also, active and constant cultivation like plowing or tilling works against maintaining a healthy soil biology. Bare soil loses carbon and reduces the ability to support the life that supports our life. You don't see bare soil in nature unless there's been a catastrophe. Modern agriculture and viticulture allow farmers and grape growers to add nutrients such as nitrogen to crops and soil. But Castile advocates promoting a healthy habitat that will produce those nutrients naturally in the soil. And that means a diversity of crops rather than a single emphasis on grapevines. The soil environmental conditions help build a grape's flavor. People are trying to make their vineyards more sustainable and eco-friendly, but winemakers are wondering if that is enough. The vine is able to adapt very well to climate changes. The problem is that if climate change accelerates, vines won't have time to adapt. Vines must be able to change and adapt slowly over the middle and long term. If climate change continues at such a rapid pace, this will not give the vine the time to create a process of adaptation. But throughout the world, methods are being adapted to the new climate conditions. I became interested in viticulture after I took a trip to Italy and took a cooking class at a winery. Walking through the winery and the vineyards and hearing the owner's story was the main reason why I have decided to study viticulture. I would like to own my own winery and be successful at it, but I can't do that if climate change has ruined grapes. When I first had the desire to go into this field, I never thought that I would have to worry about this kind of thing. It makes me wonder if I still would have wanted to go into this field if I saw a bunch of sunburn and ruined grapes. If the wine industry doesn't adapt, then it's going to die, and the consumers are going to need to train their palates to appreciate the new wine varietals. Right now, the focus should be on how we can lower climate change so then other industries won't die off. It is not just grapes that are suffering from climate change. A lot of livelihoods that are based on farming are being equally affected as well. But right now, the wine industry, their main pressure is trying to react and maintain the health of their grapes.